Welcome. This is a June 13th Beehive Production user call. We have Hans, Andrew, Jan, Daniel, Dan, Antrenig, and myself, Michael. And Antrenig, you had an inquiry about PPM pass-through and virtualization. What's the use case? Uh, yes. Yeah, so a uh, bioinformatics company that uses um, uh, the TPM subsystems on CPUs, as well as other subsystems on CPUs, which allow for a crypto... Um, Sorry, uh, isolated memory execution. Ah. Uh, is the, yeah. Uh, so where where a an operating system can handle a process to be in a secure memory space. This is this technology is actually was initially used by Windows for Windows mm -hmm. application sandboxing, and it's also available on uh, Linux uh, with some kernel patches. I don't know if it's upstream or not, but I've I've heard that depends on the distribution. Uh, and they were interested all about FreeBSD as a hypervisor. So they would right. still run their Linux stuff, but on Beehive. And their question was to start with a TPM pass-through, was to set up there. Of course, the limitation there, assuming it's a pass-through, it means a single yep. uh, one -one machine can. relationship. Exactly. Yeah. Or a VTPM with UEFI. Uh, where they can, you know, create a vi vi virtual TPM device and use that. And in internally, they also use the, I think it's called OSMF, Open Source Machine Firmware. Was that the right term? I think so. Maybe. Uh, yeah. So they use they use these technologies, and they were very much interested on FreeBSD about FreeBSD, uh, okay. um, specifically for two reasons. One of them being uh, if they can create their own operating system uh, downstream of FreeBSD, where they can yeah, hand sure. off the ISOs to the customers, and then they just manage the host, and everything else is done in the guest for the customers. And, uh, of course, ZFS and you know other things, nice things that we have. Uh, well, apparently, they've had there. issues. Yeah, so they've had issues with uh, uh, Linux as a hypervisor, uh, or even though Linux does have... VTP, VT, VTPMs, apparently. Um, Interesting. But, uh, yeah, specifically like, okay, things change very fast, things break, etc. And when they saw our setup at the uh, Armenian Bioinformatics Lab, they got interested into FreeBSD as a hypervisor and to use uh, the TPM pass-through at least to start with and then hopefully uh, to move into v VTPMs. And they're totally open about using FreeBSD current as well. Okay. Are they passing the TPM through to a Linux VM? Yes. Okay. Tell, uh, do, is that, uh, do you have any nifty links about that and use cases and distros that support it? Uh, as far as I know, the, the operating systems that they used uh, were uh, Ubuntu on the host and Ubuntu on the guest. Okay, and it does have the TPM support they need. Pa pass through and the VTP, yes. And uh, then the what, TPM and the VTPM, yes. What does a Why Linux do keep saying guest VTP? do with it? So the Linux guest runs Dockerized applications, but okay. the application is you know just for like shipping. I even uh, preached about using jails and jailer and stuff like that and Bastille, and they're like, oh, this sounds. I mean, if the application runs, we don't care. Yeah. Uh, but apparently Linux already has support for that uh, CPU feature where you can run a process in a separate memory. The reason why they do this is if it's machine learning models or uh, bioinformatics sensitive information like, like genomes, then someone can be sure that the application that they are running is the application that they want it to be running on someone else's infrastructure. Right, it's it's that's that's the yes. They have two white papers about this that I can find when I get home, um, in a sec. And uh, uh, my idea was, uh, do we have anything similar in FreeBSD if they did it natively with jails? Okay. Do you know the name of that CPU feature for the memory isolation? Uh, I can send it in one minute. Okay. Cool. Um. So. Uh, CPU feature, I'll do a search here. The funny part is that I have a, a proposed uh, statement of work from Hans for exactly that, the TPM software port, uh, passed, uh, not, not only pass through, but emulation. 
as you know, Goran did the porting mm -hmm. of the IBM firmware, but who had taken yes. integration to Illumos and and FreeBSD. So we were talking before the call on like, well, which parties would be interested in this? And there are some large oh, uh, Illumos based cloud providers and a certain industrial automation firm using uh, Beehive such that, uh, do you know if these people would be willing to help sponsor such work? Uh, if, uh, to, to my knowledge, they said if they have the knowledge for it. I mean, keep in mind, these are high level application developers who just use the low level things. Sure. Do they have a financial budget to throw in various directions? As far as I can tell, yes. Okay. So Hopefully. let's have that conversation. Uh, your, your timing is impeccable. <laughs> Hans, any questions for Antrenig? Uh, not at this time. Okay. Take a look at the document again and uh, make the improvements that you recommended and then send okay. it to you again. I will mark it up. Oh. Yeah. Cool. And I am looking at what might be device protection in Windows security with core isolation and memory integrity and blah, 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 blah. blah. So yeah, Antonik, shoot us those features as you find them. And a wild guess, perhaps core isolation. I could be wrong. That's an Intel feature. Cool. And that's where the Edmas and Cherry BSDs of the world might be curious what's going on there. So maybe, um, maybe core isolation. Cool. Thank you, Antoinette. Well, let's go with the fun news. Uh, um, yes, I, uh, sorry. You found my it. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, it's the the, the the technology itself, confidential computing. It's called confidential computing. Uh, meanwhile, Intel and AMD have their own implementation. Ah, cool. Feel free to find nifty links, everybody. Reminds me of all the other broken CPU sandboxes Intel had over the years. What was it called? MPX <laughs> or something, which they removed again, except from like one Xeon line in the mid range or something. Yes, <laughs> that, that's SCV correct. did yeah. come up and it was like, oh yeah, maybe, but it had its own issues. So yeah, there's another one on the pile. Appreciate it. Yeah, they, they, they are using SEV on um, on AMD. Yeah. That was the AMD one, right? Yes. 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 Okay, cool. Oh, well. SEV is the uh, platform uh, security processor handling encryption keys for virtual machines so that the host has to work for it to read the guest memory. Hmm. Cool. Speaking of risky things, worst segue ever. Um, let's see the basic VMM support for RISC-V has landed. So if you have a RISC-V machine, Maybe it's time to start poking at that. I don't know if they're cutting weekly snapshots, but that's probably the easiest way to test such a thing. So that is breaking news. Hallelujah. Similarly, I have a Raspberry Pi 400 next to me, and I failed catastrophically trying to get the 14.1 RPI image working or a 15.1. And all I get is a blue... I actually a colorful screen celebrating Pride Month. And so I don't quite know what I'm doing wrong, but I'm open to advice. I just slammed it on a SD, mini SD card, micro SD or whatever. Do you have a Raspberry so Pi 4? Uh, I have Not a 400 400. with a keyboard built in. No, I don't have a 4. Okay. So there's that. Do you happen to know how much memory it has? I went with the fancier. So I think 8 gigs, as I recall, and I can probably look that up. It could be part of your problem uh, because the Raspberry Pi chipset, for compatibility reasons, kept with the Pi 4 generation, the old DMA engines and so on. Oh, really? Which is nice, except that they are limited to 32-bit physical addressing, so you need a bunch of workarounds oh, really? for the 8-gig model uh, to work because it's basically similar to old-fashioned PCI 32-gig low four gig memory is required for DMA. So either bounce buffering or special allocation policy. So yeah, it can be a problem. Um, 
Alrighty then, I will see which one I have. And I did update the firmware. Oh, yeah. There Did is a you nifty. try? Go ahead. Did you try uh, any other uh, operating system? So funny you should ask. Uh, our friends in Raspberry Pi land have a utility for Windows, Mac, and Linux that does all the flashing for you. It's quite cool, and you can actually make like set a password and other stuff. And I went with their absolute standard Armbian, Dembian, Boombian, whatever they call it, and uh, it claims to have updated it. And then I verified it uh, through the online, the command line tool, and it said you're up to date. So I thought that's kind of cool. Uh, I'll drop a link to that updater. And that updater might be something smart for, say, uh, a BSD for a bioinformatics company who wants their own OS. So, so there is a mention of known Raspberry Pi issues with a bootloader uh, on your revisions and the workaround. Oh, okay, cool. On the wiki page. For, um, for Fantastic, because... Funny, I swear I had this working like two years ago when I first got the thing, but then, you know, deep pandemic and all that. Cool. I'll take a look. Yeah. Thank you, Jan. So it's deadly you need a, uh, to replace the uboot.bin with a newer one or something. Okay. You'd think release engineering would do that, or maybe they're forced to do like that. Uh, it a could be that it doesn't work on the old ones, and, and, blah, blah, blah. and okay. that it's not, yeah, it's bot specific, so... <laughs> Do you know if... Do you really expect the release engineers to raise time on a specific board? It's a popular one compared to that drawer of boards. Yeah, that did, poor you has. did you provision one in the release engineering infrastructure? No, so... Uh -huh. okay. I know it's annoying as a user, yeah, okay. but I also understand that uh, we've already burned out enough release engineers. We can't expect them to start to buy their own collection of ARM boards. <laughs> Yes. To do regression testing. So, yeah, uh, it's the problem. That said, do we know if it has the GIC 3 that is so desired by Beehive? At which point I realized I could probably jam in this uh, Ubuntu image. And I think the 4, not only the 5, has the uh, newer one, which can do interrupt uh, rerouting. Really? Well, let's boot this bad boy up. Okay. That said, uh, Daniel, you had a BitLocker question. That was in a piece of hardware, a virtualized machine, or something else. It's a it was a USB drive, um, which I cloned, um, but it was it, it was just immediately crashing when I typed the password into Windows. But I can't get it to mount in FreeBSD either. So maybe the maybe I got the wrong information or the wrong passwords or it's in the wrong hmm. state. Okay. So, yeah, maybe maybe just my experience doesn't really have anything to do with the the state of BitLocker. And I don't think it's TPE lock because why would somebody send a lawyer a file that can't be accessed with a password and, hmm. and then yeah. Right, so right. I, don't, I don't think I don't I don't think but I mean people make mistakes. So, who knows. I'll oh. have to dig into this a little more. But this comes up at my job a lot, so uh, I'll be excited to try it both in and out of Beehive. Yeah, I need a mouse. Okay, well, uh, if you have a chance, I'd love to know if that lib BDE works, which apparently is BitLocker support for, say, Linux and FreeBSD. I haven't tried it. Yeah, it's giving it's giving me, I don't know, it, it's giving me invalid parameter options and stuff like that. I don't know. Goodness. So I can't I can't tell if it's working or not. Hmm. Do we have any BitLocker ex experts on the call who are willing to admit that they know something about BitLocker? Come on. <laughs> don't be shy. Okay, moving on. We don't have Chris, but last meeting, I believe, or the one before that, he pointed out that, you know, my read-only VMs are mighty unhappy. And so I thought, that's strange. So I sat down and banged through several backing device models and tried it. And indeed, uh, it was a bit unexpected. I don't know if anyone's tickled this, but I thought, okay, uh, let's just try the comma RO. And it would like say, no, I'm not too happy. And let's try on a data set set to read only equals on. 
and uh, it gives this error that I put in the document. And then I thought, okay, let's try an ISO. Let's try a read-only ISO, which you'd think they're kind of implicitly read-only. And then I started dabbling with just going down the list and uh, cutting to the chase. Most impressively, you can do an NVMe ISO <clears throat> for what it's worth. But uh, I was a little, a little surprised there. I then followed up with just host and guest information. Um, and so, yeah, it seems that the, I suppose the EFI, UEFI support is somehow not happy with certain read-only media. Um, and then I added a second drive to say, okay, let's boot to a known read-writable drive and add a second one and various things. So for those who care, you are welcome to try that out, uh, verify it. Chris, I hope you're listening. And off we go. So at, initially, a bunch of us thought, oh, it must be like trying to read and write to UEFI variables, but that, that was not involved in any way. Uh, it sounds like I am experimenting with package base and Entrenig, you are. Entrenig, what magic did you do if you've returned? No, you've not returned. Ah. Uh, I found that on 14.1 and 15, doing a make build world, make build kernel, and then make packages is failing on both of those. So I must be holding it wrong. Jan, have you ever built those yourself? So on 14.1? Yep, on 14.1. Uh, on 14.0, you will have the problem that the latest version of package is not compatible with the make file in 14.0 because it no longer leaks an environment right. variable. It wasn't well, supposed to. So uh, you have to actually set it yourself. Fair enough, but somehow um, I had so, issues um, on both of those. Go package, figure. Just running a make build world, uh, build kernel uh, packages, potentially signed packages, yeah. works for me. On 14.1, it gives Did you simply me, do uh, make packages or something else? Just there make stuff packages. For? Weird. Okay. Yep. I totally had. Uh, I don't know issues. if I've. I probably have done build world and build kernel beforehand. Yeah. And not cleaned up. So. Uh, yeah. I don't know I if it is totally clean. Required. No happy. Cool. I'll and try again. And you probably oh. want to enable meta mode because otherwise, when you change things, you're going to lose a lot of time. Of course. Oh, I wanted super clean on an epic. It was quick, but and okay, it kept failing so on the AAC course, kernel just... module for what it's worth. That surprised yeah. me. So. It failed on this Which kernel kind of module. Want? AAC. I'm sure you. Uh, that's an old storage time. controller, right? I don't know. <laughs> I could try excluding it. Yeah, it's but... an old adaptive, uh, more or less weight controller. Right. <laughs> old SCSI uh, controller, real SCSI as in Ultra 2 to Ultra 3, uh, 320. So, yeah. Ooh. Oh, the later versions uh, added SATA and SOS. Okay, so. It, may actually still be relevant to someone. So there's that. And inversely, I tried a kind of reverse build option survey where you- Do you have an error PSD. message? Uh, I will dig it up. I can do that maybe later in the call. Yep. I think the box is up. Uh, but I use Occam BSD to turn every build option off and then run uh, the make packages. And it actually worked and it produced some rather different sizes of stuff. So that was cool. Uh, Jan, maybe after the call, we can talk about how to yep. aim at the results and slam them into a jail or something. Yep. Let's see. And here's your original syntax. And I think uh, Antonik's been messing with that in the last few hours. But that said, let's talk about your topics first before we deep dive into how to use pack pack uh, package base uh, on package with packages you built yourself as opposed to just pointing to the upstream repos. Daniel, Dan, Andrew, Hans, Jan, especially those in Illumos land who might not want to hear us deep dive into a new feature on FreeBSD. Yeah, I don't have anything great for this call. I have stuff today that would have been useful yesterday. Hmm. ZFS okay. thing. Yeah. So. Oh, what you wait till next week. Most folks are using Beehive on ZFS, so tell it's, me more. 
Well, I have questions about libzfs core, which I think wow. is probably. I looked into libzfs non core, and yeah, it's definitely internal to ZFS, but it looks like it's fairly stable from an API perspective. And libzfs core is supposed to be the easier to use a subset of the API, which is a bit well, it's more stable still. Yeah, it's specifically a, uh, um, what is it? What's the term they use for it? A uh, committed interface. So they say we will not and change that. some here. meaning of committed. Yeah. As in, we will not break this. You can ship your right. binary and it will keep on working for decades. Andrew, yeah. what's your use case? This is fascinating. Um, I'm working on... It's going to affect this as well. I'm working on putting together a um, uh, a SOAP interface for doing management of all of both the ZFS stuff and the Beehive stuff. Cool. So, which language are you writing in? Um, I'm. I just started messing with this last night so a lot of that's up in the air but it's initially looking like probably python um, because I... um there is a fairly official python binding to libzfs which is easier to use in the c uh, interface uh, as in the internal headers of libzfs specify to keep the python uh, numeric constant in sync in the headers to as a reminder to anyone changing the code. So it looks like they want to keep the libzfs Python binding working. Okay, well, I mean, so uh, if you're what I've leaning what, toward Python is probably a good safe bet that it will keep on working. I'm probably leaning towards Python, but what it's looking like is at the very least. A lot of the Z pool related stuff, I'm kind of screwed on because a lot of the stuff about getting Z pool information doesn't really seem to be there, or at least if it is there, it's not well documented. How uh, performance sensitive is your work? Are you open to just running the zpool or zfs command if you have to? Yeah, that's probably I, that's what I'm looking at right now. We're doing a, a bunch of things because um, I looked at it as an optimization for something I was writing in C. So oh, I wanted to avoid doing that because doing it in shell beforehand, I lost a lot of time just waiting for the runtime linker to spin up CFS commands. Yeah, if I if I have to call the, the system applications in order to do something, I will, but I'd like to avoid it if possible. Like I said, the, this is off topic for this That's cool. thing. Hey, it's all, all related. Um, so Jan, to answer your question, I have posted my error and it's like, that shouldn't be a problem. And no, I'm not doing something like to a tiny image it may run, run out of space on. So uh, is this with a generic configuration or after you messed with your uh, Occam BSD stuff? Entirely generic. I, in fact, have a script generic AF for uh, reasons. So, so shall we just end here and look into that? Or, uh, let's see. I will post that script, which is so ridiculously simple that let me do this. Uh, do, do, do. This is as exotic as I get. I just hop in and uh, do build worldy things. Yeah, that's pretty boring. Um, it's very, very. If you want to avoid the CD, you can always use uppercase C on your Mac. Yes, of course. Yes. To do it, do it on a single line. 
but like I do in Occam BSD. So I wanted super boring. I wanted yeah. uber boring. Anyway. So, um, um, and, and all of those fail. Uh, the very last step and failed with the AAC install there. Uh, let me see. There's always some risk I'm out of space. No, I said G1. What's that? And source exit. Oh, what just happened? 71 is an operating system error, like cannot fork or something. Uh, or that the password file does not exist. Ah, good to know. Stuff like that. So uh, it's an operating system error. So maybe that um, you something is out of sync. Okay. So um, can you just, I know it will waste time, but uh, can you just go in user object and remove your uh, object directory there. Yeah, it's so funny. You really have off a clean system. Is that I use tempfs to create a temp one and I still had 30 gigs free. Oh, so you have a lot of there. memory to waste that you have slash USR object on a tempfs. Uh, I just, yeah, threw it on there, but I, I watched memory. I didn't run out, but I'll, I'll gladly clean that up. Uh, yeah, flags. unmount and remount, whatever. Uh, so who else has topics, questions, or do you want to watch this in action? Because somehow people enjoy videos of people just poking their heads against stuff. Maybe it's sadistic. I don't know. Like when we had that hackathon video, that was our most popular one ever. Go figure. Oh, whoops. I just cleaned out the temp FS. You mount the fastest object. way to clean up a temp fs is to unmount it exactly and it i thought work. i was i thought i was doing <laughs> the underlying os but no i'll do them both just to be safe as mm -hmm. clean as can be and, you and know, now uh, just try to run a uh, build kernel dash j48 uh i probably want well yeah i said well the kernel succeeded the packages failed and i suspect i need a a world built for packages to work yes so there's that okay so i will you, i don't know what happens when you have uh, the, the sub targets are undocumented i didn't know if there's one to only build the kernel packages for example oh. what happens if you go and slash user src sys and run make packages or something i don't know you're there you are in Deep uh, implementation defined. <laughs> yes, that. and it's funny you say that the the wiki page on package base does not say a single thing about make packages. You thought it might, but what do I know? What about the release documentation? Uh, that's a good question. No such file directory. What is going on? Let's tell you, oh, how do I do this? I'm going to kick it off because it's pretty quick on this machine. Okay, it's cooking in the background and we can revisit that as appropriate. So uh, on that note, while it's building everybody, Jan, you might know that when you produce a repo directory, it's like uh, object, instead of the other OS goodies, it gives you repo. Uh, how does one aim package at that with like flags to just say, pull from here, push to there to a jail, have a nice day. A jail or BM, obviously. You don't push, uh, you pull. <laughs> oh, thank you. I'll take it. So um, basically, or you don't, basically, you fetch. You okay. can't push a package somewhere uh, that's not part of the lib package uh, functionality. So you would have to run package somewhere, and then it fetches packages. And you point it there by configuring it as a repository. Okay. Either manually selecting it or giving it the highest priority. So I guess my fear there is that you might accidentally start slamming your experimental packages on the host and sad face. That's yeah, so you that, you, that you can avoid by using a different repository configuration directory. Aha. So it's documented in the package man page, PKG. No way. Okay, well, let's take a look. Yes. At Cool. <laughs> Sorry for being that smug about it, but it's really uh, look at the synopsis in the long form, basically the first um, 
section of synopsis of the PKG8 main page. So the root Look directory the long the form. The no, repository conf gear. Okay. And then also a config file potentially if you, depending on what you want to do. And don't use the same names for different repositories. So don't have just one package base, name it package base something. Sure. So that you don't can tell by the name if it's the same repository or not. So even if you mess up, you have a chance to notice. Okay, so if I have these generated, do I need to create a config file of this syntax? It's not like auto created. In yeah, something way. like that. Okay, so that's left to the reader. Uh, or the um, reader. you can use an LFS so that you have it in the same place any every time, and even in jail, okay. so that you can share them. Uh, the config awesome. files and they look identical because the jail and the host will see the uh, nullfs in the same place. Oh. Which basically eradicates this difference so that you don't need different config files okay. because the paths are the same. Got it. So, are you mirrored on your own HTTP server or whatever? Well, you know, or HTTPS? No, ridiculously you simple. Want with transport security? Less moving parts. So, so, what's your use case? Maybe we should go back to first principles for a moment. So, first off, it's uh, systems just simply built with uh, package space, and Antrenig has some news there. Apparently, he put jailer merged with it. He can make jailer created jails with package base. I personally uh, still want to retain that ability to tinker with the system through build options, and it seems to work. That was a pleasant surprise. Yep. So maybe I flat out ran out of disk space or something. I'm running that script in the background, and it takes about 15 minutes, so uh, maybe we'll all be here in 10 minutes. Maybe not. I don't know. Let's see. Daniel, what is up with our friends at Protectly talking about a virtualization platform? We, he and I were talking offline about that. Hero, just, they're like, oh, hey, I don't know. do all the things. I don't know anything about, yeah, I don't know anything about a virtualization platform. Well, let's I just see know. as a group. Hypervisor. Okay. Uh, it, da, 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 da. Run your favorite hypervisor. Well, I think we're a bit biased on this call. XCPNG, <laughs> interesting way to lead. Citrix, yes, I think so. I and trustworthy. Oh, um, I wonder how they, uh, you know, verify that. Da, 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 so, da, what's da. their use case? Do they want to provide a virtual appliance? That's a very good question. Here we are exploring. Or so, do they want to uh, just expand the market for their marked up hardware? Okay, be nice. Be nice. Um, how Sorry. we can help the vault? Quite expensive uh, blah, blah, blah. for what it contains. Fire's guide. I'll open that separately. Um, yeah, one drive is typically not what I associate with hypervising, nor sixty-four gigs of RAM. Uh, hey, this is a low power appliance device. So, hmm. this is more a router than a. Uh, big epic server heating your Correct. basement. I think there's a marketing spin, but that's okay. I'll, I'll bite. I'll bite. And they have a buyer's guide. Um, hmm. And to whom it may concern, oh. I was impressed they do have a core boot option, which most companies do not have. That's sort of a bit like the framework laptop, which I believe has some... Uh, you do get open something for the markup uh, other than marketing. If they have custom firmware and have low power chips without BMC still using a serial redirect and stuff. It's normally not tested by other vendors. Yeah, I think the I think the pre config would be the you know the the whatever it is the hour or two saved is going to be worth it to a lot of people. Hmm. But um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I I would I would agree that I think a mirror would be the minimum that I would need. Like the the CPUs are fine. I mean, twelve so, you know, twelve threads. Oh. Like I could do. I could yeah. I could see a use case for a little bit of that. I would like to see mirror drives and ECC memory and caches. Yeah, dual. At least parity. Dual, uh, 
I can Dual argue about NVMe. What I was going to say, dual NVMe and dual 10G fiber, that's a pretty nice instant office. Yeah. Yep. They've achieved the dual SPF plus, I understand. NVMe single drive on some of them. Oh, undefined. Uh oh. The, ty the typo on a URL and this concerns me. If anyone talks to them, go figure out what undefined means. Um, yeah, okay. Undefined. <laughs> Whoops. Oops. Try but... not opening it in your tabs. Some um, pages are broken if you try that. Oh, that's their knowledge base. Let's see. I'll just try to go back full circle to their site. Okay. Do, 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 do. Uh, compare all products. Ed, this is where, and I know we're in the weeds here, but hey, um, they have some notion of non-Windows and non-Linux, so I appreciate that. Um, one, too many products to keep track of, bummer. But processor counts up to G12, as you were mentioning, Daniel. Uh, collective opinion is 64 gigs RAM feasible for a small office or ouch, ouch, small, and for what it's worth, dual and uh, two and a half inch and single NVMe. Oh, dual would be nice. That's about SATA, so yeah, you can mirror. You can mirror. Uh, 2.5 gig for those who celebrate. SPF plus. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and is there core boot on that machine? Just for all the things. Thank you. No, the new oh. ones, they, the new ones don't yet have core boot. And I think that that's just a matter of that's just a matter of provisioning. Okay. Uh, core, core boot. boot. Though, though I guess I guess core boot has to be aware. Like the core boot people have to be aware of the right the, the board and everything. So maybe there's a limit there. Well, that said, if one were to say, "Ew, ew, I don't like this company," who else knows of similar machines that have core boot available? Um, it's usually a DIY thing. Yeah, that's a that, that coverage. Don't get me wrong on a vendor page is pretty impressive <laughs> uh and you download that table as cvs i will leave that to the reader here's that in chat um my build is building i must let the dog in i'll be right back uh think about some great subjects just one sec well, I do have one question about what's on the screen. I, I've used Core Boot a couple of times, and I found it to be fine. Like, I, I mean, I, I felt I felt somewhat limited. There's like you have to press keyboard combinations, which then is a pain when you're using serial. Uh, so, like, I don't know. It wasn't it wasn't super it wasn't super wonderful for me. But but uh, you know, like Arch people have told me to use Core Boot because if I put a, you know, the manufacturer's bias on a on a system, then I'm 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 a slave to capitalism or something. I'm not not 100 percent on that. But <laughs> yeah. does anybody use? I mean, yeah, fine. Um, uh, but uh, but does do people does, does anyone here use core boot and swear by it and can convince me one way or another to care? Sports, which ran off core boot, the advantage, for example, was that if the vendor has already configured and patched it for you, and then you can, for example, use a, a serial port instead of, uh, and have a computer which doesn't even have a video output, but also mm -hmm. doesn't have a BMC. So that, yeah. Full right, low power exactly. routers yeah. like an old uh, APU one C four or something. It's probably fine. It's beneficial, you mean? Yes, or because a normal PC matter. BIOS assumes that you have a video mode. Right. Uh, right. UEFI that's, that's theory fair. is so flexible that yeah, you have to have a like your console output could be a uh, VT100 or something. Mm -hmm. um, but it's so big compared to what you need to boot, yeah. So oftentimes it's just that you don't want to be beholden to AMI or other bugs. Right. Uh, so you want to have a smaller boot. code base uh, to debug. Right, there have been, been pretty bad bugs in in uh 
in bias before. So, I mean, of course, monoculture is bad. And for uh, hyperscalers, for example, nice they are interested in having their own uh, firmware just so that they can reduce bring up times and don't have to queue behind the OEMs and so on. Right. Okay. And can skip basically half a year and bringing up a platform by not having to wait for someone else if they care right, about Right, but it. Tuning, tuning means that you have to, you know, do some do some magic to reflash it. Like, if I get core boot, then I'm at the mercy of the uh, defaults that are set until I'm, you know... If you have a board with dual flash, uh, you can just updated private box and then switch slots mm -hmm. like on a switch okay that's interesting but that assumes that you have a good board and it actually works and so on i'm not saying I... that i've used it like that i've just said i've read that it works for people like that yeah. and if you're familiar comfortable building your own bias, you already have a bus pirate close by, I assume, and a little vampire clamp to... Uh... <laughs> I usually say, you know, people with programmers with uh, tentacles for, for arms working in their basements. Working in their yeah. basements. Um, yeah, that's right. But, okay. Uh, um. So yeah, I don't have a used ThinkPad, but I can't uh, with uh, modified firmware. But I can't uh, claim that I am the one who flashed it. So yeah. Sorry. So, does it follow the classic legacy BIOS pattern, or is it UEFI-ish and could be high booted? Bringing it back to the topic. The fastest way to find out is to put in an order. Sorry. Well, uh, yeah. So does anyone have that old two, X220 with core boot within reach and niftiness? Uh, wait a second. X220, yeah. With the in a, alligator. Chip. In a drawer behind me, why? Cool. But I well, think feel free to... I, I, it hasn't not been be... updated in ages, so... Uh... Not that you could be high boot the hardware machine. So I'm just curious, is there such a thing as a, is there a user space software core boot for testing? Because maybe we aim the hypervisor at that. Core boot in a VM. Let's see. How to test core boot dot ROM with QEMU. Let's see. And there are tutorials. It would be fun if there was a beehive of one of those. No, if you want to like accidentally spin up Pixie or something like that, you could probably uh, program a core boot to mm -hmm. behave in exactly the way you want. So I guess why not the UEFI we have? You have to build core boot for a specific board, which makes sense, but still you'd think they'd have a generic QEMU board of sorts. Right. Hmm. Miles me bigger. Building packages. Okay. Well, there you go. Um Let's see. Whoa. Push buttons, push other buttons. Oh, no, not that one. Oh, not the button. Oh, I clicked the wrong button. I'm minimizing all my windows, which makes life. Oh, good. It was just a shell. Thank goodness. So I will share my screen if y'all want to see that. Because we can do it together as a team. Um. Nope. Let's play window roulette. Here we go. Clicky, 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 clicky. Okay. New share. Uh, do we see a terminal? Yes, sir. Cool. So if I did a pushy, pushy, clicky, clicky. 
Boom. It is building packages it claims. That's me tailing dash F this log file. If you want the package building to go a lot faster, set right. the uh, package format to tar instead of tar dot ZSTD so that it doesn't oh, really? do compression. Oh, I didn't know you could do that. Um, that is clever. You Online and make conf. Full of surprises. Um, well, that wasn't in my toolbox. Yeah. Hey, buddy. You're holding out on us again. Jeez. Oh, you're a wealth of information. Sorry for reading the documentation. <laughs> I know, right? We've well, got time. Right? Okay. In that case, the implementation. Yeah. Uh, you <laughs> can set that. I'll put this in the doc. Dot R as a package format. It doesn't change the uh, uh, file ending anymore uh, in recent-ish versions, mm -hmm. but um, it's in uh, the main page for package create, pkg-create, uh, and the package underscore format in all uppercase is the variable in macconf, nice. which gets passed into package create so that it doesn't compress, and that uh, helps vastly reduce the compression time because you're not performing compression. Your that would reduce compression time. Is awesome. Turns out DD is a lot faster than compression. Yeah. Amen. Little thanks. Mm -hmm. And it, if you have a fast network, uh, you're also saving time on, on decompression and you already have a compressing file system with CFS. Yes, even sir. if it's only LZ4. So um, why do co nested compression for another five or 10% or something? Especially because you pay another time to unpack the compressed package. Hmm. That's, yeah, that great point on ZFS, although that's been controversial with like, oh, let's turn off compression on syslog, and then everyone has to like tweak on what? Tweak, slash retweet. Yeah, that's a good idea. There should be a flag to a basically new syslog to please check if it's a compressed file system before it does log compression so that you can have a compatible default or something. But the problem then is that this flex changes your file name because it's no longer .bc2 and something. Yeah. But it's so annoying to have to go in and uh, change shell anytime you're on a compressed system. You mean tweaking the defaults yet again? So anyway, uh, yeah, the if, problem is, yeah. If you want to watch this paint dry, you are welcome to. Um, I personally think that I'm going to get some lunch. Awesome. So I will mm. see you guys next week. Super. Thank you, Andrew. Always a pleasure. Mm, bye. So, what are we doing? Um, and Jan, have you heard anything that make packages shouldn't be parallel build friendly? No, uh, we normally do it in parallel because right. it's bound and lots of small files on Flash. So, concurrency uh, helps to get the necessary queue depth. Okay. Um, but Boom, you it can... worked. Maybe I ran out of RAM or something on a tempfs. Yeah, maybe something was uh, so missing. To make concern user slash object. So normally you see things like this, and then boom, that is. And for... in, in that repository directory, you have sorted by ABI. Yep, there it is. And then exactly latest is a sim link. Boom. Your uh, Microsoft uh, crap is jumpy, I think. Oh, at the bottom there, you see that? Yeah, e. you're sharing your full screen. Am I? Yeah. Oh, looks goodness. like it. Like you're sharing a full screen. Goodness. Not just a window. That's terrible. Well, let me let me push buttons some more. Right now, we're looking at your window. browser. I know. I'm. That's also looking at the call doc. So there's that. Let me see Zoom. What am I sharing? Your yeah, Microsoft uh, screen share client. Uh, oh, it is desktop. When you're right. No way. Okay, fine. Well, at least you know you got to see the call doc. <laughs> at least nothing too compromising. <laughs> nah, just 
a billion open windows and stuff. Okay, yeah. so Jan, to aim this at a say just hypothetical jail. So what uh, I you can do a config so file. So the problem here is that you're uh, that it's is a temp fs, right? No, this is a real deal. This is okay. Uh, so mode. it's not gone on reboot. Nope. It's okay, that's nice. So uh, eternity. And let me have time, a look at my these uh, are VM images mirrored as per yesterday's description. So um oh yeah, living the dream. So what I do is something like da -da -da -dum, mm. to instantiate stuff. Yeah. Let me have a look at my package base auto magic. But I've done that. I have written a shell script. Uh, da -da -da um, so so could um, URL be just file and that path? Yep. File triple slash exactly that. But here, uh, what I'm doing is I'm running and first of all, I update the repository well, so that I nope. don't have to Pressure do it later. Easy. Fresh as milk in a hot summer day. Okay. So hot that's probably the first thing I do. Then the next. Yeah, so I run a query uh, basically to evaluate the query um, here. Uh, right now it's in my argument list, so um, that I can filter which packages to install. And this is what is run to install the packages. I hope it did blow up uh, your uh, eardrums as well as mine. Um, yeah, that's the command. Of course, you have to replace the variables, but hey. So in a jail context, that's boring. I'll have a J-specific uh, configuration directory for the configurations. And in there, I have the config file. And that's, and there you would find something like this. And I just uh, null FS mounted it into a fixed place so that the jail and the host have it. So the FS top line for that would be something like this. And then the jails can have the same mount point. So everyone gets to mount user object, user SSC, and so on. But that's only a workaround uh, until the original, uh, the official package mirrors caught up in the first few days uh, after the release. So you don't have to do that if you want thirteen dot, uh, sorry, fourteen dot zero or one, because we have official packages. That, but if you want to mess around with Occam BSD and your own strip down configuration, then of course you have to build your own packages, or if you want to go back to a specific points, then yeah, having your own repository can be useful. <laughs> so the first one, you make sure that you have uh, the database, the first package command, That's because you need the database to be able to run the remote package query. And there I have uh, my own uh, little configuration so that 
can have queries like, for example, these. This would be the setting in my uh, automation for a full bay. Full. And then here's an example of how I subset it. Okay, so then root deer is equivalent to aiming it at a. It's a directory. Oh, it's wow. working on. But if you don't give anything, it's just slash. Okay. Uh, so modify the host. But uh, if you give it a directory that allows you to populate a jail or change root environment with packages, the problem is you can't change root or jail attached to an empty directory. Because in doing so, it would one try to run the package command installed in there, which uh, of course in an empty directory there's nothing installed. So you have to have a a minimum viable user land so that you can change root or jail attach uh, the package command to it. And as I recall, in practice from the jail call that simply meant a the keys correct no not? no okay the keys you still need if you want to validate them but yeah. if you have a if you have a, um, a local directory for example you don't and you trust the permissions on the directory you don't have to validate so then you it, that's one advantage of, of using a read only read directory or an LFS mount or whatever, um, because then you don't have to uh, have uh, cryptographic keys to validate against. So because is there a you just trust your file that? system Cause... to contain valid data. Because of that, okay. uh, there is no uh, key, key uh, directory or key file to validate against. OK. Because you just trust that root on your host, uh, where the root is trusted because as root, you can do so much worse than overwriting the authorized keys, uh, basically, on the host. Okay. You can do whatever you want. So, um, yeah. All righty. Well. I can tinker with that after the call. And thank you, oh, Dan yeah. and Hans, for your patience. I don't know if they're really here, uh, if it's just that they haven't logged out. <laughs> There's always that. But hey, um, so just so the free package command, the first one, uh, which I think you've no, the update one patches the package database into uh, the root directory so okay. that you have an up-to-date copy of the uh, database of which packages are available for fetching and installation. Then the uh, next, the R query um, allows you to basically output as to standard out a list of packages matching the condition you provided, uh, thereby you can subset which packages to install. So you don't have to install your whole package base repository. You can, for example, say that you don't want anything ending in dot uh, in dash d uh, bug or whatever. Okay. In the chat, I shared an example of such a subset configuration. Okay. Um, yeah, you can use uh, ampersand ampersand to uh, join conditionals here, and it's important that uh, the okay. query syntax only uh, ignores uh, spaces and tabs. So uh, new lines you kind of have to get rid of using the shell. Um, an easy way is to basically set it to your argument list and then change the uh, input field separator, which is what I do in my automation scripts. OK. 
Okay. We stop the recording. I can just show you my scripts, but uh, no, not yet. Because I, no, I want to I'm potentially submit that if I here. can uh, get my shit together um, for your BSD con. I don't want that on a recording yet. Hmm. <laughs> uh, conf dear is the one containing the config file, which happens to also be my dear. Okay, and huh? update. Can I just no? Update? That doesn't look right. Because I dropped Unless the config the, file in the there. repo configuration lives in the uh, root directory of your jail, then no. It is. Uh, did I call it my package? Let's see. Cat my package. Okay. If that, if so that case, the, it may work. Then do I need a name to identify that? Oh, I guess this guy, eh? Hmm? Why do the that's update? The one. Yep. So now you do an update. Give it a spin. Yep. Uh wait, why is that? Du -du 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 um does it need full pads or something? Could be. Let's try it. You're trying to pay. Yep. Ah. So it needed a so now, okay. uh, if you do a find on slash root my jail, find dash yep. s maybe. Hold on. I'm going to copy this magical magic. Uh, it's not magic. <laughs> oh, <laughs> to this old man, it's 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 magic. Uh, let's see. Okay. Just one moment. Thank you for your patience, everybody. It's uh, just underdocumented gaps. Well, yeah, and that's why we're burning our fingers on it. Thank you very much. So that's a perfectly wrong account. That's okay. Watching the beach ball. Here, beach ball. Come on, here, beach ball. So, Come on. There we go. Okay, I have a place to put it. Um, PKG base. Nice. Okay, so that said, uh, now can I install to that directory? Wait a second. Yeah, said so... you could, but let's try to run the query next. Okay, let's do it. Because you're so focused with Ockham and so on, on keeping the I, this is a completely default ID. system. One hundred percent defaults. AF. Okay, but now uh, if you look at the example there and just basically change the command from update to to our query, keep the risk, and then you can let's start with something fairly standard and let's uh, use evaluate and Should I go to your as condition uh, percent no you know uh, that dollar star only works if you have it set as your current shell argument ah, list for query of course. um which you don't so you would percent n uh, space tired inside the no, no, Inside the single ticks. Yep. Tilde space free BSD dash star. Ah, okay. And close it. Then yeah. another space oh. and then an, no, no, leave the single tick. Yep. And then percent N. So this means find all packages those names match this glob pattern freebsd dash star okay. and uh of the matching packages print the package name okay to send it out uh, which should give you like 500 packages if you run that command run it it doesn't hurt it just spams your console yeah should finish in a fraction of a second boom one second. Fine. Okay. Yeah, okay. 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 Um, so, and if you use a um, more complicated query, yes, like oh, and if I don't do the end, do horrible things happen? Nope, it wanted that. Okay, mm -hmm. fine. Super what? intuitive. I removed the percent and uh, didn't like it. Okay. No, no, no. You have to specify what you want. Here is the. Uh, um, so, um, but 
cutting to the chase, in theory, can I do an install to that directory? Yes, that's the next uh, uh, last command. Is it in your, let me do a- I think I shared it via- Let's see, you probably did. Via chat. Yes, yeah, you did, look at that. But the list is there, uh, you can use if you want to install it all, you, instead of uh, the dash dash, you can have uh, a dash dash blob and then just uh, in single ticks a star. Which basically install, um, yep. Lose any of this? No, delete that. Just still keeping the D. Okay. Oh. Under the cursor. Oh, yeah, I see it. It's chasing me. And then uh, basically dash dash. Glob. Asterisk? No, no, glob the word. Oh, glob really? Word. <laughs> no kidding. Okay. So to enable globbing. Okay. And then uh, dash dash yes, if you want to not be asked. And now you can give a glob, uh, for example, just single tick star single tick. You have to escape the glob from the shell. Oh, so that? Yeah, that, no, that, no, no. Backslash star also works. I just find single tick stars. No, don't, double, don't overdo it. Okay. <laughs> no double <laughs> quoting required. Okay. That will install the full. Uh, package based repository, anything in that repository, all 500 something packages should just be installed in your uh, directory now if you do that. Okay, are we feeling lucky, punks? Well, look at that. Well, look at that. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Yes, yep. sir. Most of the time is lost decompressing uh, them. And if you made a great point about how packages. to get around that. Okay, love it. And even if you did all the subsetting, uh, the sort util command to uh, index the uh, uh, root CA list still takes several seconds. So there's a lower bound how much you can reduce the population of a useful user land with a full root CA list. Unless you want to rewrite that command in some way to be a lot faster. Okay. I think it's still a shell script, so there's probably a lot of optimization potential, but hey. So now you have all your 519 packages installed, so you should be able to just spin up that or change root into it, for example. Okay. Or start a jail in there. Uh, let's stock up. I'll, I'll drop it in the dock. Why not? Here it goes, because that was epic. Uh, I believe you used the word under documented, and I will I will support that. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I wanted to do something non confrontational. <laughs> okay, I could have said... in the dock. And like I said, stop blogging, start documenting. So, okay, so true ch. Uh, to root uh, with, do I need to? So maybe we need the, uh, or should I give it a command or what? BSD underhanded handbook or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, the quote? underhanded free BSD handbook. <laughs> Package my comp. Uh, top. Hmm? No, it's a jail. Okay, this is good. Yeah, so you don't have a, it. no, it's awesome. You don't have a device file system mounted and so on. Yeah, of course. Like, because hello. You're just inside your change root now. Uh, which ls? Okay, that, that is works. a sign of life. I like it. Okay, your, your user land is complete. Beautiful. You have a kernel in there. Oh yeah, of course. Hey, and if that happened to be an image, uh, have a nice day. Well, thank you, Jan. Uh, you're doing Rod's work. I'm glad you've burned your fingers on that for the rest of us, and now you've transferred that knowledge to the slowest member of the team, me. <laughs> so I thank you for well, that. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, any questions from, say, Dan and Hans? Uh, granted, it doesn't apply as much to Illumos, but hey, at least 
previous deacon has one tiny advantage over all your like warm towels awesomeness in Lumos land with with your crossbow networking and all the fun stuff. Anyway, this has been a very strange call, but we genuinely, genuinely made progress. I appreciate that because boom, there are 519 packages built during the call and installed during the call. So I thank you. And here's a good question. Do you dash H dash D one? My, my, uh, it is. 3. I was 5. away from the call, but. You you built all these you built all these base packages yourself and then installed them. Yes, I and it's all documented in the doc. Nice. Documented is staying a bit much, but yeah. Hey, <laughs> well, let's take a look. Uh, uh, let's see what's missing. You copy and pasted to... what I gave you. <laughs> well, no, I made it working with actual examples. Uh, let's take a look. So here's all that stuff. The build itself, I believe, is above there, which is just like hey. Good. That's my super fancy, ridiculous build script. No, no. That if it's That's sufficient a for someone else to follow, it, it's a good start. Thank you. It is. It's, it's a start, it, exactly. But not much more because it's completely, uh, as I said, underdocumented. The documentation exists, but it's spread over wikis, man pages of the sub commands used to implement some feature. And some of it is just exists hidden in, in a comment in a make file. Um, in someone's head. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, awesome. Uh, maybe this gets dumped straight in the wiki with a little sans. So, uh, ah, that's a very for example. What I, Go ahead. If you automate it all, it can look, if I steal the screen share for a second. Sure. Go for it. We are recording, but hey, hey. I'm sure yeah. you are familiar with it. Uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, can you see? Yeah. Yes, sir. Is that a reasonable resolution for all of you? A little bigger is always nice, but that's for us old folk. Beautiful. Uh, like this? Fantastic. <laughs> Let me destroy that. Moving on the edge, so so this is how it can look, and here it's losing time, basically indexing the roots here, and then it's done. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. And, and you get a subset of packages. Yep. Uh, That's why. I, one... So here is what how I define for jail. Okay. Here. So then, uh, let me set it up. So here um, is again include, 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 include. Mm -hmm. But the important part is. Uh, this is my subset configuration. And ah, so you're excluding things like the exactly. Uh, I'm excluding 32 bit user land, yep. debugging and development stuff, the kernel, the bootloader, BSNMP because it pulls in the tests because it calls the script, which is part of the test for something. That was a surprise. Uh, yep. <laughs> Then the compiler um, tools, which include big firmware, uh, D-Trace, because we don't have, unlike um, Solaris, support for safely running D-Trace instead of uh, jail. Could you so, drop that syntax in the chat, please? The, I already have. I long ago. With the, the exclusions? Yes, if you look oh, at the chat. Goodness. goodness. Um, uh, yeah. By name with clang and goodies. Look in the chat, the last chat message. Oh, the last one. Ooh, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> yes. You read my slow ass mind. Okay. The only thing which is new is the is this one line here, which I just added a few seconds ago because uh, 
starting with FreeBSD 14, the sources are a package as well, and the kernel sources as well. So, uh, oh no, kidding! If you don't, ex you said 14 or 14.1. 14.1. Okay, cool. Good to know. So that so I can uh, the, start you... updating my host with package base instead of FreeBSD update soon. Uh, yes, you can pick your poison going forward. Uh, as of a week or so ago, we have official packages for 14.1. Uh, yeah, it took a my... while um, to have the official packages because uh, the um, reproducible build uh, support in Pudia and so on tripped up the release engineering process because it says, oh no, nothing changed. Uh, so I don't need the new version. Ah, mm. Yeah, but for a release, you kind of want to ignore that yeah. reproducible build um, stuff and say, yeah, but for a new version of the operating system, don't tell me that nothing inside of this package changed since the last release candidate. That's probably yeah, true, that. but no, it is true, but it doesn't mean that I don't care about the version number. In this case, all that changed is the metadata, but that's important, even if it's not part of the reproducible input-output mapping. I, since if, I already build my own packages, I would probably build my own package base as well. You, you can I'll, just I'll use learn, make packages for the base system. I'll so, learn more about that later. Jan, is there one single source uh, file or did they break it up in some clever way? What do you mean? Like a package for sources. Is that source.pkg? There's or... one for the user okay. SLC and one for the kernel source. That they oh, just, cool. Just two. Because of that. Um, so. That makes sense. Yeah. Uh, because of that, I just put a star after yeah. it because. True, but my mind I can't don't. lob something that's uh, elsewhere. <laughs> mm -hmm. Cool. So, uh, I like that. Ooh, and actually, and then, you raise a good question. When I just did that build, I wonder if it spat out As a you can see, with that subsetting in place. package, yes. Uh, I'm down to 107. And if I do that for a uh, full... So before compression, Ooh, weird. Yeah. Just so you know, go ahead. I'm listening. I swear. Yeah, what's weird? Uh, I did. I looked at my package build, and it does not include a source package, package or two. But I don't know what step would create those. I don't know. Are you on on fourteen dot zero? Uh, no, fourteen one. I will verify that. That um, case it should. Yes, I did a just a asterisk like source and it didn't find it. Um yeah. And I guess the assumption would be just grab whatever source directory was used for the process, like specified in the make command. Mm -hmm. Well, when it creates hypothetically creates source packages, does it just use the one that you've built with? Logically. Yeah, the sources. Oh, that's the only thing that which makes sense to me. Okay, so then there must be some weird step that adds building of the source package. packages. Hmm. Maybe. Okay. Um, which is documented in someone's head somewhere. If only there were a big conference where we could talk to such people and a time machine to do it a week or two. Uh, yeah, you should have. Ask those questions probably during BSD can. Uh, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> anyway, right? Mm. This year, the uh, forwarding of questions from IRC wasn't really working because oh, really? nobody planned ahead for the, for having a hybrid part. Okay. So we had streams, but the IRC wasn't. Oh, a no, there supposedly was, but if it it had some rough edges, yeah, that could be. Yeah, it has rough edges, I but I totally understand. I would have preferred the real conference as well. <laughs> the, okay. The dedicated. 
Well, that, so awesome. Thank you. I appreciate proxy. that. It was a little rough at one moment there, but we pushed okay. through and we have package basic for all the things. And Dan, I look forward to. Yeah, and that now goes. I can do things like uh, so I stop it. Okay. Started. Oh, I wanted to show that. So. Yep. So. G. E pair. So I have that. Okay. I just try it. Out. Just because. Whoa. So now it has, I have support for creating the EPS on demand and front onto the bridge. But I think I have forgotten to automate bringing up the EPL. Yep, it's not up. I have to do that to add that to my automation. Um, so, yep, okay. And now it. There, I put a reminder in chat. Bring up the auto mm -hmm. automatically. Yep, so we. The next step I wanted to automate but haven't yet is which is what I was working on during the call. Ooh. So that I can have a temp FS here. Uh, so just, da, 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 da. So now I have a populated temp FS of that filled with a snapshot mounted on top of the stuff. And so now I can run a RISA conf i, I have config. So it's a jail, it's got ePair networking, and you were about to do DH client. Yep. Ooh. Cool. Each client working. Nice. And ETC. Uh, yeah, you removed rescue. We solve conf working. Yep. Just... Yeah, I know I'm on a different continent. Okay, so that's so, of course on now DFS, if I do this, it's DHCP, uh, and it's package based, and it's all really quick. Eh? And now I can. Hmm? Uh, if I... Almost there. There you got it. Bad value. Oh, and, uh, uh, what's... of course I forgot the syntax. No uh, worries. Automate it. Okay. Anything else? Yeah. I have disabled, not disabled. Ah, there's an up arrow in your future. Oh, it didn't. Hmm? It was the other one. It doesn't like. Okay, I need some. Yeah, oh. exactly. Okay. It's below. So this one, it and so now I can run RT Soul. DD, just for verbosity, bam. Why not? No ad oh, yeah. for you. Do you have an ad blocker? But um bum. Oh yeah, thank you. Dad joke. Uh yeah. Lose that slag there. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Boom. Boom. Nicely done. And now ping. 
six, yes. Well, that's strange. Uh, yeah. Why is there... We all look forward to your blog post or documentation post. No, I, I am calling it. Uh, yeah, so that was the uh, error. I didn't have a source address uh, selection policy loaded. So now IPv6 works too. Cool. It is. What did you say? 1840 UTC? Yep. Cool. Well, thank you, everyone. Like and subscribe and see you next week. Love it. Blog it. Document it. Ship it.